Welcome to Civitas Conversations with Senator Richard Stevens. So when there's disagreements and you need to have uh, some sort of legislation passed to, uh, uh, to represent your, your, your district, how do you go about mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. rectifying the well, disagreements? For district legislation, there is a common courtesy that's followed in the Senate that uh, we respect each other's local bills. So if the local people in the community and their local elected officials, their mayor, their, their town council, however they're governed, um, come together on an issue, and the legislator from that area brings a piece of legislation that only affects that area, hmm. by courtesy, almost always, the General Assembly will, res will respect that, at least in the Senate. Uh, and adopt that legislation as requested. Okay. Well, an another issue, um, and this is sort of, uh, it seems to be the, um, the the recourse for the General Assembly uh, to stay competitive economically. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of lowering across the board taxes, they'll approach subsidies on, on mm -hmm. targeted industry. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of bills that I, I recognize that you voted for um, uh, subsidies, and I'm sort of curious, mm -hmm. what is your position on subsidies? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of a, um, a, a lesser evil if you can't lower all the taxes? Mm -hmm. Are you just going mm -hmm. to try to uh, you know, stimulate any way you can? Or well, is this, uh, sure. Well, first of all, I think taxes should be lower than they are. I see. We have higher tax rates at the state level in North Carolina than most of our counterparts in the southeast, whether that's income tax or corporate income tax, which we ought to do away with, by the way, or sales tax. Uh, we're on the high end. We tend to be on the low end of property taxes. Uh, and so when you, when you put all that together in terms of what does an individual or a business pay in taxes, we're about 25th or 26th in the country, all taxes. But the state level, which is what the legislature con, you know, controls, our taxes are high. So first statement is all taxes ought to be lower in my opinion. Then you get to incentives. If you look at my eight year record, I voted for uh, some incentives and voted against a lot of them. I don't care for incentives. Uh, first of all, uh, that rewards someone who's not here yet. What about the folks who've been here for a good while? Absolutely. And most of our jobs come from small businesses, not from the big white elephant that's brought in from another state to make 600 jobs, but from the, from the, from the 50 small businesses that hire five people or 10 people. That's where most of our jobs come from traditionally. We're not doing a lot to, to support those businesses. Um, so I generally don't like the concept of incentives. However, in this economy and in this marketplace, they're right now necessary evil until Congress steps in and, and does what they should do, which is to say you can't do this state by state uh, incentive business of one-upsmanship. That's banned uh, state countrywide. Then if we don't do it, then we're going to lose the industry. So you're saying that you, should, you think that the federal government should prevent um, states from competing with each other Absolute, subsidies? Absolutely. Absolutely. But did that just stop it? Isn't that sort of the, like, the tenet of federalism, that people vote with their feet based upon the most economically prosperous area? Well, you'd, you'd hope that. You'd hope that the best economic incentive is a good quality of life, low taxes, quality education, quality transportation system, good government. You'd hope that's the best economic incentive there is. Right. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a flat surface, everything equal world, that's true. But if states around us are enabled to basically by the presence of a business and bring jobs to that state as badly as jobs are needed right now, we're at an economic disadvantage to not be able to match that. Uh, and that's, that's my dilemma again. I don't like the concept, but I don't want to uh, have our people out of work when the surrounding states have been allowed to do incentives to bring in jobs that we should have based because we should have the lower taxes, the better quality of life, uh, the better school system, the better transportation system. Et so I'm seeing a, a theme of sort of um, necessity overcoming ideology in these sort of sometimes. Times. I mean, they're they're basic principles you, that you know, uh, pragmatic uh, situations should never overcome. Uh, there's some core principles that I wouldn't violate no matter what the bill is. Uh, but in a day-to-day -day environment in the General Assembly, uh, where it is a give and take, where compromise is often the name of the game, you pick your battles. Uh, and if you can get 80 percent of what you think is right and yet the bill has 20% of what you're not happy about, you might go with 80% today, hoping there'll be a day when you do away with the 20%. It's not the Jesse Holmes approach. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. And everybody has their own approach. Yeah, of course, you know? of course. He was very successful with his approach. Um, I'd like to think I'm successful with this approach. Mm -hmm. Not to compare myself to, to Senator Helms, he was certainly a, a great star. 
a great leader, uh, but others have taken a different approach. Yes, I chose this one because I felt like the thing that I ought to do most down here is be effective for the people that sent me here. Mm -hmm. And if I only voted no, if I never compromised, uh, I wouldn't be able to accomplish anything for the people that are represented other than be a voice. Yes, voice sir. is fine, voice is important, uh, but results are also important. Very much so. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, and, and sort of in, in a closing statement, um, what do you think the major issues uh, facing North Carolina are? We're in the depths of a recession right mm -hmm. now. Um, what do we need to go, or where do we need to go going forward in order to bring us out as, as quickly as possible and, and bring us back to prosperity? Well, the state government is not going to bring us out of prosperity, into prosperity. Right. That's not our role, no matter how much people think we ought to or can, we can. Uh, so you're not a <laughs> Exactly. Private government, private sector will bring us out of this recession uh, and will create jobs. What we can do is continue to create an environment in which business can create jobs, which is to me, which to me means less restrictions, less regulation, lower taxes, a supportive environment so that the uh, private sector can create jobs. And that's what it's all about. We're still hovering around 10% unemployment. That's way too high. Uh, if we can uh, get out of the way of business, and yet do the things government can do well, which is good roads, good schools, then good jobs can come from, from the private sector. Uh, but clearly at the state government level, the biggest issue facing this state is going to be the budget for the next several years. Right. We're facing a multi-billion dollar deficit. Do you think uh, we should have taken it on a little bit harder this year? Absolutely term? we should have. What absolutely. do you think we should have hit hardest? Well, uh, we, first of all, we relied on one-time money for ongoing lottery, expenses. Primarily. Well, not just the lottery, but the, both the lottery and the uh, stimulus money from the federal government. Uh, and the lottery presumably will be ongoing. I voted against the lottery when we, when we started it. Uh, this is bad public policy to, to fund government that way, but nevertheless, it's there now. Mm -hmm. But it presumably will be ongoing, but the stimulus money will not be ongoing. That's a, that's a, a one-time uh, or a two-year time a phenomenon and doesn't come back. Well, in my opinion, just like at home you don't take your savings account uh, and pay your mortgage with it or buy groceries with it. Right. You know, once you spend it, it's gone. Uh, having put those monies into the operating budget, um, we'll have to face some fairly significant cuts to make it up. We should use that money, uh, if it was going to be used at all, for one-time purchases. I'd like to have built roads with it, built bridges with it, uh, built schools with it, built university and community college campuses with it, yes, one-time expenses with one-time money. That might have even stimulated the economy as opposed to continuing to pay the same people in government that you've always been paying. So would you say that political expediency was sort of the impetus for this year's budget? Uh, very much so. Uh, Democrats didn't want to raise taxes. Uh, Republicans would not have voted to raise taxes anyway. Um, no one wanted to do massive cuts to education. Uh, and so it was a very much of a, of a let's get the, let's do the least harm and, and adjourn. Great. Great. And oh. come back next session. Sir, thank you very much for sitting down with me. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thanks for your project.